What's up, party people? My name is Vegan Chris. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And today, I want to read you another comment that someone left on my channel, okay? It says, if we're animals, well, it says if we're animal, but if we're animals, what's your problem with us acting like animals and eating meat? You see a tiger kill a deer, but we just have a different way of doing it. Since evolution, mankind has ate meat. We originally ate raw meat, but we have evolved and our body is just used to cooked meat. You just want to twist facts to suit your ideas. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I think this is hilarious, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I'm certainly not twisting any facts. I am not intentionally twisting any facts. If I'm twisting any facts, it's completely unintentional. I feel like I'm just stating the facts. I'm just giving you the information. And I completely understand resistance to it. I mean, obviously, this is something that you've done your whole life. It's something I did my whole life. So there's definitely some cognitive dissonance there when you hear something in contradiction to something you've been doing for decades. It's, everybody is not just going to accept it off the bat. So I completely understand that. And there's a bombardment in the media saying that eating meat is perfectly fine. So I completely understand that. But um, let's just go over this little by little and let's talk about it. Okay, let's deal with it. So first off, he says, if we're animals, what's your problem with us acting like animals and eating meat? Okay, so right there, I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding with the behavior of different animals. Yes, we are animals, but all animals don't behave the same. Different animals behave drastically, drastically differently. Some animals live in the water. <laughs> Some animals live on land. Just because you're an animal doesn't mean you're going to behave like every other animal. So I think we can come to an agreement on that. I'm sure you can agree with me on that fact right there. Let's just take this step by step, okay? So now we understand and we agree that all animals do not behave the same. Okay, so now let's look at the different behaviors of animals because you gave an example here. You gave an example. You said, you see a tiger kill a deer, but we just, ha we just have a different way of doing it. Okay, so what you're saying there is because tigers kill deers, humans should be able to eat meat. That's what that statement is saying. Correct me if I'm wrong, please. But what I see here is because tigers get, be, you know, what, what you're telling me is if I see a tiger kill a deer in the wild, I should run up to that tiger and, and tell him he should be vegan. <laughs> okay. Um, and again, I think there's a fundamental misunderstanding there because tigers are carnivores. And so I guess the next question after that would be, okay, well, what makes a carnivore? Well, there are many differences and there are many characteristics that define a carnivore or an omnivore, something that eats both meat and plants naturally. I'm not talking about behaviorally because behaviorally speaking, yes, humans are omnivores. We behave like omnivores in that we eat animal products and plant products, but that doesn't mean we are naturally and anatomically designed to do that or physiologically designed to do that. And there are ways you can look and there are indicators that will tell you if we are or not. You can look at any animal, look at its body and determine what its diet should be. Okay, so let's look at the tiger. The tiger obviously has claws and fangs. Those are for tearing into live flesh. Okay, so let's let's take this step by step, okay? And that's a characteristic of a carnivore. All right, so we'll write right here. Carnivore. All right? This is going to be kind of hard to see. There we go. Carnivore. All right, we'll just write this down so we can keep track. Okay? Claws and fangs. Now, do we have claws or fangs? 
No. And and don't tell me about your little canine over here that's a little sharp. Don't start pointing to that and tell me that's a fang. Because the moment you use that to tear into live flesh, then that's a fang. Okay? But until then, that's a canine. And canine doesn't mean dog. Okay? That's just a type of tooth in your mouth. It doesn't mean you're, you're supposed to eat live flesh. Okay? Cooked flesh is a completely different thing. That's preparing it beyond recognition. So that's, that's complete. We're talking about what we're naturally designed to eat here. Okay? So if you're a carnivore, you have claws and fangs so you can tear into live flesh naturally. You can hunt your prey. We can't do that. We can't hunt our prey naturally. We need tools. We need traps. We need all kinds of stuff like that. Okay? So what else? Um, I mean, I, I, even, even body cooling. To cool your to cool your body down. If you are a carnivore, you cool by panting. You cool your body through your mouth. If you are a herbivore, you cool your body through your skin. You sweat. Okay, so tigers pant. Okay, humans sweat. Okay, so that's another point for herbivores. Okay, we're keeping track here. All right, you got your carnivores, you got your herbivores. Carnivores have claws and fangs. They pant to cool their body. Herbivores have hands or hooves, and they sweat. Okay, so, so far, humans are over here in the herbivore side. Hands and sweating. Let's move on. Let's talk about something like vitamin C. All carnivores in the wild make their own vitamin C. Okay, first of all, vitamin C can only be found one place in the wild, and that's in plants. All carnivores make their own vitamin C. They don't have to eat any plants. They make their own vitamin C. Vitamin C is the building blocks of the collagen in your body, which basically builds pretty much everything in your body. Okay, so you need vitamin C. Carnivores make their own. Herbivores have to obtain vitamin C from their diet. Okay, so let's put that down. Vitamin C. Carnivores make their own. Herbivores must obtain their vitamin C. So, humans do not make their own vitamin C. We have to obtain it from our diet. Again, putting us in the herbivore column. Carnivores make their own. So as we can see, it's, it, the, the conclusion is clear. I mean, we can do this all day, but the conclusion is clear. All anatomical and physiological evidence points to humans being herbivores, not omnivores, not carnivores. If, if we were omnivores, again, we would have claws or fangs like raccoons or bears. Those are true omnivores, okay? Um, the fact that we have the intellect to prepare meat to a point where we can consume it for a time when it doesn't kill us right away doesn't mean that we're designed to eat it, okay? But you can even look at uh, carnivores lap. They lap their water with their tongue. Herbivores sip their water or whatever they're drinking with lips, okay? Another clear difference. You have lapping. You have sipping. Where does that put humans? Do you lap your water or do you sip your water? I mean, just ask yourself. I mean, don't take my word for it. Okay, even the saliva, the saliva of carnivores has zero ends. Carnivores don't chew their food. Carnivores take a bite big chunk, swallow it whole. There's no chewing. I mean, you know, there, there may be a little mashing, but there's no chewing like herbivores have flat teeth. Look at your teeth, okay? If you're a carnivore, you take a chunk, you swallow it. If you're a herbivore, you take a bite and you chew it for a while. The digestive, the digestion, digestive process starts in your mouth with your chewing, with the enzymes that's in your saliva. Carnivores have no digestive enzymes in their saliva because they don't chew. 
we have to chew because we're designed to eat plants. Plants have cell walls that need to take time to be broken up. So you have to chew it and then you have to ingest it and it goes down into this long digestive tract. Our digestive tract is about 12 times our body length, where a carnivore's digestive tract is about three times its body length, which makes perfect sense because if you're eating meat, you don't want it sitting in your body, which is hot, which is 98.6 degrees. You don't want rotting meat sitting in there for a long time. You want that stuff to get out of there quickly. So that's why carnivores have such a short digestive tract. That meat can be flushed through there quickly and it doesn't rot inside their system. Okay, so let's put that down. Um, we're talking about saliva. Carnivores. Saliva. No enzymes. Herbivores. Enzymes in saliva. Okay, digestive tract. We talked about that. Digestive tract. Carnivores. Three times body length. Herbivores, 12 times body length. Again, the conclusion is clear. Humans fall in the herbivore category. We have hands. We sweat. We obtain our vitamin C from our diet. We sip our water. We have digestive enzymes in our saliva. Our digestive tract is 12 times our body length. None of that applies to humans on the carnivore side. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And we pay a price for not eating the diet that we're designed to eat. That's why heart disease is the number one killer. It's the number one killer among those with a Western diet. You look at cultures that eat a primarily a vegan diet and heart, heart disease is, is next to non-existent. Which is another excellent indicator of whether or not you're a carnivore or a herbivore because atherosclerosis only affects herbivores. It does not affect carnivores. Dogs, cats, bears, tigers, lions, they can eat as much meat as they want and atherosclerosis will never develop. Atherosclerosis is the cholesterol that builds up, that lines your arteries. It's the plaque that lines your arteries, that occludes blood flow to your vital organs. That's why you have a heart attack. That's why you have a stroke. You may know somebody that that's happened to. That's why these things happen. It's because of that, your diet, you're consuming all this cholesterol your whole life, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then people are so amazed when somebody has a heart attack or a stroke at 30, 40, 50 years old. Oh my goodness, they were so young. Well, they've been doing this. They've been piling this on three times a day for four or five decades. So that's what's going to happen. That's what does happen. It's happened in my family. It happens in just, I'm, I'm sure you know somebody who it's happened to. So that has got to be the number one indicator right there. Atherosclerosis. Carnivores never get it. So if, if we were designed to eat meat, if we evolved to eat meat, why hasn't our bodies evolved to handle it? Why haven't our bodies evolved to handle all this meat that we're supposedly designed to eat? Okay, so we got to put that on the list. Atherosclerosis. I'll just abbreviate. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven indicators that you can look at right there that will tell you why just because you see a tiger kill a deer in the wild does not mean that humans are supposed to eat meat. It's a, it's a big misconception, but it isn't true. Okay. Um, <laughs> Getting back to your original comment, you say since evolution, mankind has ate meat. I, you say it like evolution happened yesterday or last year or, or 10 years ago, like it was a one time thing since evolution. But um, again, it seems like you're saying we evolved to, you know, to eat meat. And um, 
if we evolved to eat, even the cooked meat, I mean, it's the you say we evolved to eat cooked meat, or our bodies got used to cooked meat. Well, again, no, we no, we haven't. Our bodies still develop atherosclerosis from eating cooked meat. Raw meat would be even worse. Okay, so again, if we evolved to eat meat, somebody should have sent our bodies the memo. Because our bodies certainly have not got the memo. My name is Vegan Chris. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.